All right, this is a quick notation video on the concept of looping number systems. And basically, the number system we have right now is looping. It's um, I'll explain that towards the end. But let me give you a basic idea of what a looping number system is. Whereas you think of a number line, you know, you have negative 3 here, negative 2 here, negative 1 here, negative, or just 0, 1. Two, you know, threes here, four, and so on. If you keep adding here, you'll you'll never end up on this side. You know, it'll just keep going this way until you reach infinity. A looping number system would be one where instead of having a number line, you have more of a number circle. Um, with that said, like one here, two here. This is the uh, most commonly this is the one I use the most often because this one turns up a lot when you're looking at patterns in modulus. So six, seven, and I call this the octal looping number system. And you know, there's also a zero. So, but octal because it ends on eight before it loops again. And basically, if you count up, you'll count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 8 plus 1 would become 0. It wouldn't become 9. And it's not like base, um, it's not like base 8. It wouldn't be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20. This isn't a base number system. It's a looping number system, which simply means uh, when you get to instead of adding one on like a number line that just goes in one direction forever you kind of add one and it curves around the number circle the number line that's in a circle until you get back to the start so uh, 6 plus 1 is 7, 7 plus 1 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1 and so on uh, the reason I showed this one is because you'll probably see this in patterns that I'll talk about in the future but when I'm doing modulus patterns, specifically ones where I, I take the modulus of a number, maybe modulus 12, and then I check, and then I do that for the whole number system up to maybe 100. And then I'll do the same thing with modulus, uh, just a random, modulus 7. And then when I grab the ones that are equal to each other, so every time there's a number where modulus 12 is the same as modulus 7, I'd write it down. I usually end up getting when I put them in order something like one two three four five six seven eight zero one two three four five six seven eight zero one two three four five six seven eight zero or some pattern on the octal number circle. So it might be like one two three four three four five six seven eight zero one two three four five four five six seven eight zero one two three four five six five six seven eight zero. So there's all sorts of patterns that this number line comes in handy when you're looking at modulus. And the way I notate this, since it is a notation video, that was more of a diagram, is I just simply say um, at the start of an equation, like if you were to notate on which log you're performing your equation, and it's the same way this goes at the start, you just put a simple circle with an arrow, and then over here you put the range. So the octal one would simply be 0 to 8. And you don't you don't put lines there. That was just for demonstration. So an equation where I wanted it in an octal 8 number system would be like this. And then I would say, you know, 3x plus 5, where x is and this is just how I notate such that, so such that x is, and then I can say something. It would be impossible for me to say something like 9. 9 doesn't exist. And if I did write 9, you would just interpret that as 0 since you loop around. But I'll just say where x is 4. So if I go back to my octal number circle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 0, then x is 4. This isn't a 3. This is my such that notation by the way. I know it kind of looks like 3x equals 4 but this is saying such that and then a whole separate thing such that x equals 4. Then I would start on 4 so here's 1 so 1 2 3 
four, and I'm doing that three times. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So three times four would be three on this octal number system, this number circle. So three plus five, one, two, three, four, five, eight. So three X plus five in this demonstration would equal eight. And if I changed it to plus six, it would not equal nine, it would equal, oops, it would equal zero. All right, so that's, it's a pretty easy concept. Um, the thing I was going to say with, right now we kind of use a number circle. This is um, something I've argued in my brain about with a lot in my life, and it's basically we think it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you know, and it goes forever on a number line. But once you start approaching infinity, uh, you'll realize things, especially when you look at asymptotical limits and graphing, if you take a number like 5 divided by 0, it approaches... It doesn't only approach infinity, but it approaches negative infinity as well. So it's plus or minus infinity is the limit answer to that. So if of a standard number divided by another, but divided by another number is equal to uh, this number y, then it's if you add one, it would be you know one and it'd be the next, it'd be z, really. It's just one number for that. And if you, if you subtract one, then it'd be w, you know, whatever. Um, and then, of course, on our number line, these would all be one apart. So if you have something here that's equaling plus or minus infinity, theoretically, if you add one, you're going to, if you add one to, let's say, and let's say you subtract one from the positive infinity, then you have infinity minus one. But now you're on, you're on the, positive scale you're getting closer to zero on the positive side but if you take negative infinity and you subtract one or you add one to negative infinity then you are closer to zero coming from the left so it's almost like zeros over here and you're on both directions at the same time so in my brain uh, it would almost seem that our number system isn't a number line but it's a number circle where zero is here you know and then infinitely in the same place, but just for diagramming purposes, we're going to put it over here. We have 1, and negative 1, and then 2, and so on, and then we get a billion, and uh, Google, and then we reach right across from 0, where we have plus or minus infinity, similarly to how we have plus or minus 0 right here, right? So if you say plus or minus zero and you add one, you can be on the right side. If you subtract one, you can be on the left side. So if you have infinity, uh, whether you write it as plus or minus infinity at all, and you add one, you can go over to the right side, and you subtract one, you can go over to the left side. Uh, because it's actually the inverse, though. I messed that up. If you add one, you go to this side. And if you subtract one, you go to this side, because the plus or minus duality. So, in a sense, I visualize our number system as a number circle, simply because you can reach plus or minus infinity from one equation, then with a bunch of algebra, start getting on this side coming to zero, or this side coming to zero. Um, when you started off with just two numbers that aren't anywhere on, you know, they're specifically on one side. So, yeah, since infinity can never be reached, you can actually view this as a, since you have a spot that's never reached, you can kind of view it as a line since there's no, there's no connection since infinity is theoretical. So it can be viewed as a line, but if you do start using infinity in your math, all of a sudden you've connected the bridge from one end of the line to the other end of the line kind of like a little wormhole, and you've completed the number circle. So when you start using infinity, uh, our number system does become a number circle. But for now, you can just think of it as a number line. But anyways, this was the notation video on how to notate number circles. It's just an example.
quick example problem if you want to try this in your head. 4 times x plus... And I'm going to write 12 here, but remember it can't be 12 because our range is 5 to 9, so you're going to have to convert that over to whatever it would be like I did at the start when I gave the example. Um, Alright, so that, and I'll say that x equals 7. It's a fun little problem for you. Uh, shouldn't be too hard. But anyways, um, if you have any questions or ideas or anything, contact me here. Um, feel free to visit my website. I hope you're there right now, actually, watching this video. So, decimology.com. Whoa, different video. <laughs> decimology.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this um, it was fun to make. It's fun to teach. So thanks. I'll see you guys next time.